Bowling Lanes in Canton, Ohio. It's the finals of the $115,000 Ebonite PBA Senior Championship. Hello, everybody. I'm Denny Schreiner, along with Mike Durbin. Well, we've come to the end of the trail here on the PBA Summer Tour on ESPN, the Senior Championship here in the Hall of Fame City. An interesting cast uh, this evening in the championship round. We've got a little bit of everything tonight, Michael. Well, we certainly do, Dan. What's most interesting is that we have four guys on our telecast this evening that have never won a PBA Seniors Singles event. And then we have one fellow who has, and that's our defending champion, Glenn Allison. Well, what's more interesting is this is our seventh PBA Seniors Championship Tournament, Den, and the previous six winners have all been different individuals. And this year, those individuals were awarded a red coat emblematic of the PBA Seniors Championship. So we've got four guys tonight trying to get that red coat and one guy trying to get two. And Mike, in essence, the PBA Seniors Tour is growing as well. 115 players started out this week. We're down to just the final five, and we'll start in the number five position with a man who led this tournament a year ago, Buss Oswalt. Hung on last night. He had a rough time and just barely hung on to make our championship round. He's a tough match game player, can bowl real good on those tough conditions. Needs to win four games tonight, though. Mr. 900 will start out of the number four gate this evening. Our defending champion, Glenn Allison, just hung in there all the way, ground out, made a lot of splits, and somehow got on our show tonight. He says he doesn't even know how. Quiet Glenn Carlson out of Fresno, California, will start in the number three position. Bowling in his second PBA Seniors event, and this is his second championship round appearance. Uh, still looking for his first victory, though. And the lone left-hander on the telecast this evening, Daryl Curtis. Making his first appearance on national television anywhere, those butterflies got to be flopping in his stomach. And Mike, I think really the man to beat tonight, probably the best senior player at this point in time, Tita Semez. Has won already a PBA Senior Turing Pro Doubles Championship with Joe Berardi. He wants to get his first Senior Singles Event Championship. I can't get all those words out, Dan. <laughs> Mike, let me ask you one quick question. The seniors don't get a chance to bowl that much in championship round. Will they be nervous tonight? Will they have a hard time with the lanes? Well, I, these guys are all experienced players, but I think Daryl Curtis is definitely going to be a little bit ner nervous. The rest of them, I think, are experienced players, and I think they're going to do very well. I think the scores are going to be in the 210 to 215 to 220 range. Last year, we had just a terrific championship round. We're hoping for the same here this evening from the Hall of Fame lanes in the Hall of Fame city. Stay tuned. The opening match is up next. Telecast is being brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all that you do, this Bud's for you. By Columbia 300. And by True Value Hardware. More than just a name, it's their way of doing business. A little revenge, perhaps, in store for Buss Oswald. He lost last year to Glenn Allison. They're up next in the opening match. Youth. A time to race with the wind. To run free. That's only a dream for some kids. But you can help them fight to make that dream come true. Every time you buy Budweiser and Bud Light this August, you help us make a contribution to the Muscular Dystrophy Association. So look for this display where you buy Bud and Bud Light. And remember, you really make it work. Winners know what it takes to win. In this game, it takes more control, more power, more precision, more courage. One ball has it all. One ball dominates winning on the Pro Tour. The Black U-Dot from Columbia 300. The Black U-Dot, the ball of champions. Columbia 300, sold only in lanes or pro shops. True value hardware, it's more than a name. It really is more than a name. It's Paul recommending the best tools for the job. Chester finding the perfect shade of blue. It's Gene helping with a heavy load. Mary Ann knowing the right answers for a do-it-yourselfer. In fact, it's more than 6,000 independent stores nationwide who know that delivering personal service is our way of doing business. Morning. 
Morning, Fred. Morning, Bert. Let's go, boys. That ice cream's not going to mine itself. Say, these gold rush bars are a real gold mine, eh, Bert? Right. Ice cream, peanuts, caramel. Rich chocolatey coating. Yeah. Gold rush bars sure look good, eh, Bert? Bert. Hey, Bert, don't eat our profits. Sorry I lost my head. Gold Rush bars and new Gold Rush nuggets. The precious ice cream treats mined by penguins. Hey, Fred, you want to grab a cold one? Real funny. Gold Rush in your grocer's freezer. Will history repeat itself here at the Hall of Fame lanes in the Hall of Fame city? Well, only time will tell. It was last year, nearly a year to the day, that Buss Oswald and Glenn Allison matched up for the PBA Senior Championship. Here's a look back at last year's action. 19 for the victory here in the 10th. That smile of victory, but he still needs to get nine on two balls. And obviously stay well behind the foul line in the process. But that was the clutch shot. Boy, we've seen some unbelievable bowling this summer, capped off by the seniors here at the Hall of Fame lanes. Couldn't ask for anything more exciting. Glenn Allison, now a study in concentration. Sees that title right before him. Just has to be careful. Swings it. And leaves the 7-10. Turns around, looks into the crowd. And realizes he needs one of these. He's got to get one of these. Got to go for the seven, right, Mike? I would go for the seven, yes. I would, too. It has to be easier to make the seven pin. Here you see the shot. Allison running it out all the way. Not enough juice, though, the to five, clinch the victory. Five went right in front of the seven, so did the head pin. And he was thinking that he'd at least get nine on that. This is it for the title. Hang on. Double bounces it. Stay on the lane, and it's... <laughs> And there you see the defending champion. We're now live at the Hall of Fame lanes in Canton, Ohio. Opening match between Glenn Allison and Buzz Oswald. The only difference between those two this year and last year is the fact that Buzz doesn't have a mustache anymore. Oh, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, opening shot in the opening match of the Ebonite PBA Senior Championship. It is ironic that they wind up bowling each other again this opening match. Well, it's not for the title, but uh, one of them, if they get hot, may climb the ladder here this evening. And Buzz Oswald, well, he left an 8-10 in the 10th frame last year, or he really could have locked the Glenn Allison out. And uh, last night, uh, and he had a lot of trouble. He lost all of his games, and he had the reason was that his ring finger was infected and really was bothering him. He went to a doctor today, and he says it's much better. And he, he pulled the last six games last night with only two fingers, the middle finger and his thumb. Glenn Allison out of Whittier, California, and it's Pack City on the right-hand lane championship pair, 39 and 40. And here's a, an up-close and personal look at Glenn Allison. He's the elder statesman this evening at 57 years of age. Seems impossible to me that Glenn could be 57 already. 209 average this week. On a game of 275, and he also posted the finest match play record of our television finalists this evening, 13 wins and 5 losses. Doesn't look 57, does he? Student of the game. So in a conventional grip. And we might mention as he leaves that soft 10 that he's using a 15-pound ball. In fact, it's actually about one ounce lighter than a 15-pound ball, about 14 pounds, 15 ounces. Mike, what's, what are your chances of carrying with a ball that's that light? Don't they diminish? Well, actually, uh, the reason Allison is using it is because he thinks that they increase. He feels that the power that he puts on a bowling ball with a 16-pound ball makes the ball hit the pins too hard. He leaves too many solid tens and hard, what they call hard wraps uh, so that he, he'll carry a lot more of those on the solid hits with a lighter ball. The penalty is that when you come in half pocket like that, sometimes it's a little hard to get out that weak ten. Buzz only had one game on the championship pair this week in match play competition. There you saw it was 224. Not a medium scoring pair in lanes 39 and 40. Buzz told me as he strikes in the second, he's playing much further out this evening than he did throughout the week. He was playing closer to the second arrow. As we see, he's just a spry 51. 
and uh, his 1987 average just a little short of 200. Averaged 201 this week, but he was averaging much more. He was leading the tournament going into the last six games and just uh, really had a lot of trouble. It was a long six games for him last night. Boy, very thrilling position round game last night. Really amazing. Oswald trying to uh, remain perfect through three frames. Give this one a little too much room, and all of a sudden the two pin goes down. Got whacked from behind. And his family looking on. You're going to see the head pin go right to the wall here as Buzz gives this one a little bit too much room with not enough lift. Right about over the eighth board and won't make it back. We'll watch the head pin go to the sideboard and come back off. That's a direct result of the modern day pin with two voids in it and a uh, laminated wood flies much faster. Boy, Allison really spins the ball. He's got kind of an unusual release, doesn't he, Mike? It opens up the hands. Opens up the hands and goes over the top of the ball as he throws it. And you see the benefit as we watch Glenn from the front. Watch his follow through. Free swing here. Head steady. Watch his eyes. See the hand open up as he lets it go. Good follow through. He tripped the four with that lighter ball. He might have left a four nine with a heavier ball. It's amazing. It looks like he's introducing himself. He wants to shake hands with everybody as soon as he throws the bowling ball. Looking for the double, though, to try and tighten things up. Oswald has already struck in the first, second, and third. That one got inside of his target, but the ball held at the last second. And so Glenn Allison, the defending champion here, comes back with a double. Still trails. Hi, I'm Wayne Angelo, sales manager of Wolf Ford in Lancaster. We appreciate all the customers who have made us very successful this year, one of the most successful years we've had. We're running out of inventory, and at closeout time, people look for high inventories and good deals. We have the good deals, but our inventory is running out. We want to take care of you. We want your business. Please come in and see us while we still have enough inventory that we can professionally serve you and sell you the products you want at the best price at Wolf Ford in Lancaster. This weekend on Warner Cable, meet the pros. Saturday, it's the best of the best when Boris Becker, John McEnroe, and Matt Willander take to the courts for the ATP Pro Tennis Championships. Catch it live on USA. And Sunday, ESPN's got your ticket to pro football. Grab a front row seat at the 50-yard line when the L.A. Rams take on the San Diego Chargers. ATP Tennis, Rams versus Chargers. Go pro this weekend. Once again, this week on ESPN, it's the National Football League. Mike Durbin's favorite team, the Los Angeles Raiders, will match up with another Rams. West Coast team. Oh, I was going to say Rams, excuse me, <laughs> against San Diego. Jack Murphy Stadium should be exciting. All right, Michael, take it easy. It's Sunday, August 23rd, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I know for sure that you'll be among the millions watching that game on ESPN. Absolutely. I wouldn't <laughs> miss it for the world, Denny. <laughs> you know I had to do that to you. <laughs> and back to live action here in the Hall of Fame City. Bus Oswald perfect through three frames. I think he's going to need to shoot a big game, though, because Allison's lined up already. Boy, knock that weak 10 out. Now, we see the difference. Allison with that light ball left that weak 10. And Buzz Oswald with the regular 16-pound ball knocked it out. So everybody can make up their mind, which is the most benefit. Last year was the top seed in this event and lost by a pin, 201-200. to 200. And he's got to be thinking about that championship game of a year ago. Right. And in qualifying last year, he averaged a whopping 244 for his first 18 games. Yep, that's a, a PBA senior record. Is it five in a row? You betcha on the left-hand lane, lane 39. Buzz Oswald is off and running. Buzz says, hey, that wasn't the real me that was here last night. The real me showed up tonight. Alice, a little shake of his head there. He realizes he's got to get two strikes here just to keep it close. Glenn will be the first to tell you that uh, he's a bit surprised that he made the championship round this evening. Said he didn't bowl particularly well yesterday, but he won 13 of 18 matches, and that was the key. So he obviously threw some great shots in the clutch, and that's where he's at at this point. Right back in the pocket, another X in frame number five, and so Allison works on a turkey of his own. And you watch his follow-through, and when it goes straight through and that hand opens up, the ball's almost always in the pocket, but when that follow-through goes left, then Glenn usually comes up light in the 1-3. In fact, usually he doesn't, you know, really get into the 1-3. It, it hits the 1-3, but the 1-pin never hits the 2. He can cut it to 10 pins with one more right here, Dan. 
Glenn Allison, and ABC and PBA Hall of Famer. Mr. 900, they call him. Shot three 300 games in succession. He knows what it's like to strike. Likes this one down on one knee and shakes a fist at the pins, and uh, we got a dogfight here in the opening match. Watch the follow-through. See the swing, and watch the follow-through. See the hand open up like that? Right about seventh board. Right on line. It was solid from the minute he let it go, and he knew it. Well, I tell you, when the seniors go down on one knee, there's a chance sometimes it might not get back up, huh, Michael? <laughs> That's nasty. <laughs> that was. That's the hurry. Oh, two, four, five. As uh, Boss Oswald giving it plenty of room. Last time, trip to two on that lane. Do uh, you think he made an adjustment, Mike? Well, I think Allison's four bagger put a little heat on him, and he just didn't throw the ball quite as well. Well, you might be right. The spare was missed a lot during the week. Two, four, five. Oh, oh yeah, he missed them both. Boy, badly. Got to hit that lead pin. Remember, that was one of our tips on spares and clusters like that. Two, four, five. You've got to hit the two pin here. You can't make it. And he's so worried about the chop that he goes right on by the two pin. Has no chance to make that spare. Ball seemed to hook early for him, too. And suddenly, dude, he goes from a lead to a seven pin deficit. And Allison says, uh, I still got your number, Buzz. Pretty consistent week until the final six games last night for Buzz Oswald. Let's see if he can bounce back here. Oh, nice shot. Well, the sign of a true champion, somebody who comes back with a big shot when they need it. He's seven pins down. Allison works on the four baggers, so stay tuned for more action. Since you don't buy a refrigerator every day... I should have bought a Frigidaire! Oh, oh. I got a Frigidaire. Ask for the one that lasts and lasts. I should have bought a Frigidaire. I finally got a Frigidaire. It's still hard to find a refrigerator that'll outwork or outlast a Frigidaire. There's only one Frigidaire. Ask for it by name. I'll take the Frigidaire. Now. Frigidaire. Here today. Here tomorrow. Can I help you today? Well, we have a lot of painting to do, but we need help in matching our budget. Oh, no problem. We have quality Fuller O'Brien paints on sale. And for a limited time, you can save up to 35%. Pick Fuller O'Brien's best exterior or interior paints. Great. Now do you think you can match the color of our samples here? Myrna! We can match just about anything. Fuller O'Brien paints, creating color for over 100 years. There's just one place you need to go for all the names and games making sports news. ESPN Sports Center. Three times every day, Chris Berman and Gail Gardner bring you the latest scores, the hottest trades, and the top plays from the world of sports. Sports Center takes you on the road with live remotes from major events like the World Series and the Indy 500. Sports Center, your total source for sports, only on the Total Sports Network, ESPN. And there's the beautiful Ebonite Trophy. And a nice big paycheck will go along with that this evening to the champion. And there's the gentleman right there responsible for it, Mr. Tom Malloy, the president of Ebonite International, made the trek up from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, earlier today. Big bowling fan. Off to a good show so far today. He's oh, yeah. Some nice bowling. Allison looking to increase his lead from 7 to 17. He's always been a player that's uh, been able to take advantage of an opportunity. Has six career titles to his credit. Mm, boy, he's right back in there, flush again. Four pin thought about standing, but huh, it was only momentary. And again, that light ball has struck six out of seven times. So who's to say that he's wrong? He's just a little bit left with this one. Follow through one a little bit right. Watch the two pin just clip the four. He had nick it as it went by. Almost left it, but just clipped it. A glancing blow. Yes, very glancing. Up 17, can increase to 27. Looks good. Oh, looking for the wall shot. Doesn't quite get it. And uh, so Allison finally stops striking in the eighth as Buss Oswald checks out the overhead telescope. Excellent crowd on hand. Good crowds this week. Uh, they enjoy bowling here in Canton, Ohio. 
And they're used to seeing the seniors here every year. This is the fifth consecutive year that they've hosted a tournament, actually the sixth consecutive year here at Hall of Fame Lanes. And the cross alley spare, and we might mention at this point in time that Janet Bueller, the wonderful hostess here at Hall of Fame Lanes, uh, still recovering from a recent uh, accident, and I know she's home and probably glued to the uh, television, and she's already invited the, the seniors back again next year. Janet, take it easy, relax, and we'll have you tap dancing on the approach next year. Right. And Allison kind of gave a little fist to that seven pin as he made it easily this time. You know, he's seen it somewhere before. Oswald trying to get back into the match gives it some room. How about the two pin trip? Not this time. And so he'll have to settle, hopefully, for a nine pin spare. Trip the two and the third. And gives it way too much room here. Aiming about at the second arrow, and he's over almost the seventh board. Goes out to about the fourth and doesn't want to make it back. Fortunate, really, to get away with just nine. And he just barely hit the two pin this time. Mm. Well, we've had a marvelous summer on ESPN. This is our 12th telecast. And uh, once again, a number of people involved in helping us throughout the year. And from a player standpoint, Frank Ellenberg, Butch Soper, and also Chuck Pierce, who work in the truck and also keep score for us uh, throughout the summer, do a marvelous job. We just want to pat them on the back. Couldn't get along without them. I can't keep score that well. How about you? Buzz needs to, uh, can still potential 243. He needs to set himself up for the 10th frame here. Give it a lot of room again. Knock that 10 pin out of there. Buzz's carry has been good when he's gotten it in the 1 3. It's just that he's missed it twice. Potential. Actually, three times, and he got that one strike. Potential 243 for Buzz Oswald, but it may not be enough. Allison going at a 239 pace right now. He would need a double in there to lock him out. He's got that light bulb blowing that five pin out of there. I know one thing, if this continues, there are going to be a number of folks going out tomorrow and buying some 14 and a half pound bowling balls. Watch it come in light. Right over the seventh board. See that follow through in the open hand? Now watch the five pin. The ball hits it, and the head pin went into the four, knocked out the seven. Well, certainly it'd be a little easier on you physically to throw up maybe a 15-pound ball. Well, especially. It's a great tip for especially senior citizens, those type bowlers, and even lighter down to a 14-pound ball. to really this. apply the clamps at this point, and he throws it through the nose and asks for nothing other than perhaps an eight-pin uh, conversion. And did you see him speed up the approach? He got the ball started too soon. The feet had to catch up, and the ball was left as soon as it left his hand. Right here, he pushes, and the feet go real quick. See, real fast there? Now the ball's left right now. The follow-through went further right, if you notice. And he's fortunate to get away with just leaving the 3-6. It's amazing what pressure will do to you, even a great bowler like Glenn Allison. Stretches out and converts uh, <laughs> the spare. Possible 239 now, but Buzz Oswald, should he strike out, could shoot 243. So still has a chance. That's all Buzz can ask for is a chance going into the 10th. Kind of amazing. The tables are turned a little bit. Last year, Oswald had to sit there and watch. This year, he, uh, he's got a position to, to do something about it. There's the shot he was looking for. It's always easier the second time. Well, those fill balls always strike. Well, 239 is not a bad game, Mike Durant. Actually, higher scores than I thought we would see. They weren't striking that much in practice then. Glenn Allison averaged 209.4 throughout the week, so uh, 239, excellent performance. But uh, first things first, there you see the scoreboard. Plus, Oswald with plenty of work here in the 10th. Been light twice in a row. Nine. Same shot three times in a row, and he breaks it down for only five. He never made the adjustment then. He needed to move right or something. And there you see Buss shaking his head. I, sometimes, though, Mike, you do get locked up on a particular lane, and you, you keep making the adjustments. You just don't get the reaction. Well, Allison's going to move on to face Glenn Carlson. Now, let me ask you this, Mike. In, in Buss's situation, do you make a drastic change, maybe with that shot in, in, in the 10th, because you know you've, you've, you've hit that lane light three times in a row? Do you, do you make a drastic change or no? It didn't look like he did. Well, it's what's going on in your mind. If you're coming up light and hitting your targets, you've got to move to the right. You've got to move the feet one or two boards over and keep that same target. 
if you've come up light and made an errant shot, uh, then you have to stay and aim at the same target. So you have to judge the quality of the shot. And evidently it was his execution because right there he just threw it where he wanted to and went dead flush. Now Glenn Allison pats him on the back and Buss realizes, well, this one's a little easier to take perhaps than the one that uh, he lost last year for the title. $4,000 for Buss Oswald. And there you see Glenn Allison. He is uh, past the first hurdle here. And there's a look at the opening game, 239 to 223. So Allison keeps moving on. Don't forget, Bowling News is coming up next. $100,000. The High Roller Bowling Tournament is coming east to the new Showboat Hotel, Casino, and Bowling Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Win only two head-to-head -head matches to recover your entry fee. Win 10 matches for the $100,000 top prize. Join the elite of amateur bowlers this October 24th to the 27th and feel the excitement. For more information about this tournament and the lowest travel packages available, call 1-800-257-6179. Why do you invest with Charles Schwab? My commission savings over several years have been substantial. Very substantial. Well, I just opened my Schwab account this week. Bought 100 shares of stock and I saved uh, $49. I cut my commission costs in half. Period. Here at Schwab, we drive down your commission costs. And we do it with a level of service that you'll really appreciate. For your free Schwab booklet, call toll-free 800-334-4700. Welcome to the final edition of the Bowling News. Just two weeks ago, I showed you how the sport of bowling was used to raise money for Jerry's kids. And tonight, I'll be introducing you to yet another exciting idea which involves the game of bowling and yet another excellent civic project. What do birds, bears, kids of all shapes and sizes, and the sport of bowling all have in common? The Akron Zoological Park Snow Bowl, of course. That's right, this coming January 16th at Stonehenge Place, bowlers from all over northeastern Ohio will be testing their 10-pin talents. The proceeds from this year's inaugural event will benefit the Akron Zoological Park in a number of ways. Basically, we'll be using the funds for the welfare of the animals, their conservation, their health, the renovation of their exhibits, and we'll also be using those dollars to help make the place a more educational and fun place for our public to visit. So when you come to see the Akron Zoo, you'll see the improvements made by those dollars that many other funds couldn't possibly do. Without question, bowlers and bowling fans are some of the most loyal sports enthusiasts anywhere. And Akron, Ohio is certainly no exception to that rule. It's really a treat for the Akron bowling proprietors to uh, be involved here with the Akron Zoological Park to get the 30-some uh, thousand bowlers in our greater metropolitan area to uh, back the park. And we're going to raise $50,000 this year to uh, help the zoo progress and to, to build some new pens to help feed all these animals and to take care of this 30-some acres of uh, beautiful park we have here in the city. And the bowlers uh, that we've talked to are just uh, eager and waiting to be involved and uh, help show the, the close-knit familiness of the bowling people to uh, back the Akron Zoological Park here in Akron. Lest you think that only 200 average bowlers will have a shot at fame and fortune in the Akron Zoological Park Snow Bowl, that's hardly the case. The Pro-Am event is open to one and all. The people who bowl in our city, uh, I think, will come through and tell other people, even people who maybe have never bowled before. Someone like me who hasn't bowled for 10 years probably would you know, throw around a 62 if I were lucky. Uh, it's still going to be fun uh, because of the way it's set up. This coming January 16th, the bowlers of northeastern Ohio will have a golden opportunity to brush up on their bowling skills and also lend a hand to the Akron Zoological Park. Being confined to a wheelchair doesn't necessarily mean that you can't still enjoy competitive bowling. Take Marvin Dennis, for example. Marvin captured the AMF Seagram's Cooler Get Things Rolling Tournament held recently in Altamonte Springs, Florida. After qualifying in the regionals, the Northridge, California resident bowled 141 pins over his 121 average for three games en route to winning $3,000 in first place prize money. 
At any PBA Seniors Tournament, a trip down memory lane is as important as the opening round of qualifying. Tonight, the PBA would like to salute its oldest living member, Wrongfoot Lou Campy. For those of you who don't remember, almost 30 years ago, Lou won the first ever PBA tournament in Albany, New York. He's now 82 years of age, and we want to wish him a speedy recovery from a recent operation. Throughout the years, the so-called experts have debated whether professional bowlers are really athletes. Our Jim Duff offers this update. I'm an athlete personally. There are some that are great bowlers that uh, some would consider not an athlete. In any sport you do, you have to be in good shape. In the world of professional bowling, there is a renewed emphasis on getting in shape. And many bowlers, like 25-year-old Amleto Monticelli, strongly believe in benefits to be derived from lengthy morning sessions involving yoga. Amleto practices it for more than an hour each and every day. Or jogging. He runs about six miles a day. Or weightlifting. Palmer Falgren hits the weights two or three times a week while touring six days a week in the off-season. Starts it in and sends it out. Perfect. Buddy. It used to be that pro bowlers really weren't thought of as good athletes, but now that's all changing. With the stakes so high, more and more bowlers are turning pro. And with increased competition has come an increased emphasis on fitness. Fitness in a sport where the difference between winning and losing may be a few extra miles. Our new workouts at the health club. They are not athletes in the sense of the hardening it might take to be a pro football player. But through the 42 games of a regular PBA event, a bowler will lift over five tons. And he'll carry it over two miles and project it at a target 60 feet away with unerring accuracy and spin over 700 times. Now, in order to do that competitively, I feel he has to be some sort of an athlete. 36-year-old Palmer Falgren works hard to keep his athletic body in shape. At each and every PBA stop, you'll find him grunting and grimacing at some local health club, whether it is bench pressing for his upper body, squatting with weight to increase leg strength, or riding the stationary bike for overall aerobic fitness, Falgren feels the effort is worth it. Over the years, exercise has added 30 pounds of muscle to his frame and a lot of confidence to his game. Weightlifting, I feel, has really prolonged my career and helped me out a lot. In what ways? Well, it's, it's strengthened my legs. Uh, bowling is, is a game where you need to be real strong with your legs and, and real steady. Also, the upper body exercises, some for the arms, the forearms, to stay strong with the lift with the ball. And all these strength exercises build your confidence and your self-confidence in yourself, which relates directly to your bowling. When it's 93 degrees in Oklahoma City, you don't always feel like running. But young bowler Amleto Monticelli has not missed more than three consecutive days of exercise in the last four years. He knows that the miles put in today, the sweat, the toil on the road, or the intense concentration required to complete his 27 different daily yoga exercises just might make the difference the next time a key match is on the line. When you run, you, you know, you build stamina and, uh, or any kind of exercise, you just, you know, get so well physically that your, your brains work a lot better and you automatically, you can think more positive without even trying, you know, you just, you just are more positive to it and that helps my body a lot. And Next time you watch a PBA tournament and marvel at how easy these guys make it look, remember, there's a lot more to this sport than just rolling a ball. There's pressure, concentration, and competition. And that is why you'll find the likes of Amleto Monticelli in some contorted position. Or Palmer Falgren working out with several hundred pounds of weight on his shoulders. Two athletes pushing their bodies to the limit with the hopes of striking it rich in the sport of professional bowling.
I'd like to take just one, one moment to thank uh, Jim Duff for his exemplary work this past summer. Also, Chuck Pisano for keeping me in line, and thank all of you for watching. We'll be back next summer. That's it for Bowling News. And coming up in match number two, a pair of Glens, Glenn Allison and Glenn Carlson here in the Ebonite PBA Senior Championship. Hi. I've been looking all over for this terrific video cassette I heard about. It's called Not So Great Moments in Sports. It, like one scene is where Billy Martin tries to give an ump a shoe shine. That's a fantastic video. My favorite part is where John McEnroe plays tennis with his orange juice. I hear there's a scene where Reggie Jackson protests a Gaylord Perry spitball with a visual aid. Yeah. I love it where a kicker tries to play quarterback. Not So Great Moments is 45 minutes of the funniest sports footage I've ever seen. Great. So you have it. No. It's not in video stores yet. Now what do I do? You get it free. Let me understand. You don't have the video, but you're going to tell me how to get it free. Right. Am I missing something? You're missing out on Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated? I love SI. What does Sports Illustrated have to do with it? You get not-so-great moments in sports free with your paid subscription. Oh, I let my subscription run out. Well, now's a perfect time to go for it again. You get 25 weeks of America's best sports coverage, including the Pro Football Spectacular with all the picks, previews, and profiles, and the beautiful swimsuit issue. I like that. Everybody likes that. You even get a handy NFL schedule. And not-so-great moments in sports? You get it all. I do. How? Just call Sports Illustrated's toll-free number. Wait a minute. All that great footage has got to be worth a fortune. I ought to know. Yeah, I'll bet they raised the price of the magazine, right? Uh-uh. It's over 47% off the cover price. Just three installments of $9.89 each. You can even put it on a credit card. No kidding. I get 25 weeks of SI, including the Pro Football Spectacular, the football schedule, the swimsuit issue, and the video cassette free. You get it all. Just call 1-800-621-7000. I gotta get to a phone. What's that number again? Here. 1-800-621-7000. Have you heard of not-so-great moments in sports? <laughs> Won't be long before those footballs will be filling the air. CFA College Football, 27 games on ESPN beginning Wednesday, September 2nd. Pittsburgh versus Clemson. Hmm, not bad. Pittsburgh will also meet Brigham Young live, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. And some other college contests will be including the national champion Penn State Nittany Lions, Clemson, Notre Dame, Michigan State, Texas, and more. Boy, some great college football action on ESPN. I'm looking forward to it, Denny, and I understand that you're going to be doing some of those games. Yeah, I'll be involved in a few here or there on Thursday nights and Saturday nights. Really looking forward to that. Uh, Long Beach State at uh, Fresno State, my first game on October 1st. So, boy, I'm looking forward to the fall schedule on ESPN. I'll tune in and watch it. All right. Who do you like in that game, buddy? Well, I just... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, right? Who knows, right? Oh, that'd be an exciting game on the West Coast. Back to the live bowling action. In this game, though, I'll, I'll go on a limb and say Glenn is going to win it. I knew you were going to do that to me. And you're right. Glenn Allison picking up uh, right where he left off on the championship pair, 39 and 40. Glenn with eight strikes in the opening game. Shot a 239. It was good enough to defeat Buss Oswald. But now he's got uh, Glenn Carlson on his hands. Well, you know, the thing is here, Dan, that these two bowlers just don't have enough experience. We've got one guy here that's been a member 27 years, Glenn Carlson, and Glenn Allison's been a member 29 years of the PBA. Glenn Allison is a uh, charter member. Oh, how about shaking him loose a little bit? Five pin left standing on lane 40 for Glenn Carlson, who earlier this year made the championship round in the uh, seniors tournament at the showboat. He did, and what I noticed on this first shot, uh, Dan, is that he has changed his line from the line that he had all week long. He's moved from the extreme outside angle into around the seventh or eighth board where Allison's playing the lanes. Mike, when a uh, player shoots the five pin, are they, in essence, trying to help themselves get lined up for the next shot as we take a look at 50-year-old right-handed Glenn Carlson, who's just a rookie here on the tour? Yes, they are. We see this week's average much better than his yearly average. I don't understand why his yearly average is so low. He must have had a bad tournament in there somewhere. But uh, definitely, whenever the, a professional bowler of any caliber leaves a five pin, he's going to practice a little bit on it, try and get that strike line a little bit uh, more zeroed in. Ooh. Slides by in that left-hand lane. 
Well, obviously, uh, Glenn Carlson, a situation where is he going to have to move his feet or his target, Mike Durbin, because he was uh, light on both lanes? I don't know. I think, maybe, I think maybe he should move back to the line he'd been playing out there around the first arrow, uh, around the fourth or fifth board instead of where he's at. The ball's going to hook more out there. Oh, I just love his arm swing. Isn't that gorgeous? He has a nice rhythm. He strives to, what he's trying to do is to get the ball in motion quickly. He feels his problem is that his timing gets a little late and he carries the ball too long. So he wants to get that into that swing fast. Allison, who's had the pocket zeroed in so far with no problem. Trying to open up quickly with a double. Anytime you see Glenn Allison get down on one knee, it normally means he's thrown a pretty good shot. Our and commissioner of the Professional Bowlers Association, Joe Antonor. Glenn Allison leads by 12 in the early go here of match number two. And there you see what happened earlier this week. Bit of an edge, perhaps, psychologically. Doesn't mean much, though, in a championship round. No, I can remember one tournament that I beat Mike Berlin in three times. Then when we bowled on television, I got beat, so. Just so happened that was the uh, Firestone Tournament of Champions, too, so that was a costly title. <laughs> Quite mentioned, and of course, uh, the winner of this championship will be heading to Akron, Ohio on, uh, I guess, what, the last week in April? Yeah, not everybody knows that. The, the PBA Seniors Championship, the winner of that gets a trip to Firestone for one year. I'll give you one better than that. I was at the tournament this year, and this gentleman right here was leading after, what, three games this year in the Tournament of Champions? Was he really? Yes, he was. Glenn Allison came out of the gate and shot like 270 and 280 or something like that. Led the first two or three games, and then, of course, as the tournament wore on, Glenn started heading backwards, but, boy, he had a smile on his face <laughs> at uh, Riviera Lanes this year. Well, he says, I got a chance to get back there next year. They got to knock me out of it. He wants to come back for a return engagement. Loves this part of the country, even though he is from California. And he did just that. He moved back outside. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? Shifting and moving and trying something a little bit new. Well, the reason that he played a little bit further in is there's more oil there. He was playing what we call like the hold shot. But there was evidently too much because he couldn't get the ball into a roll. So he moves back out where the lane is a little bit drier, where he's played all week long, and he can get the ball into a heavy roll. He has, he has to execute properly out here, but at least he knows what the ball's going to do if he throws it properly out here. Glenn told me that he bowled much better in the night blocks when he could get the ball to hook a little bit and react for him. Back out again, and good shot, but he leaves. Uh, that was like a three-quarter ten. I'm going to say that was better than a half ten. And again, there's the heavy ball leaving that that quarter pin. Allison throwing that light ball and really having no trouble striking. So maybe Glenn Allison know. has a little bit smarter than all the rest of us. Well, you're going to have a hard time convincing me that uh, the game in and game out that a 14 and a half pound bowling ball is going to carry better than 16 pounds. Well, it's not 14 and a half. It's 14 pounds, 15 ounces. Oh, okay. So one, it's nearly 15. Pounds. One ounce short of okay. 15. Al Carlson converts the 10, and we've got a very close match indeed. An 11-pin lead for Glenn Allison, and there you see the sweet swing. Man, look at that tarpon jump. There's nothing like it. And there's nothing like Genesee beer. It's always crisp and consistent because it's brewed in just one place. All natural Genesee, the best catch I know. The great outdoors in a glass, Genesee beer. Light or not, it is a very, very good beer. It's got a lot of flavor. It's got great taste. Genesee has kept the flavor and it's kept the taste in a light beer. Genesee light. It's unbelievable. This just in. Luby Acura, Lancaster's exclusive Acura dealership, wants you to compare. Compare Luby Acura's precision-crafted automobiles to the competition. Find innovation, not imitation. Luby Acura is number one in customer satisfaction and home import car of the year and dollar value of the year. Call 1-800-54-ACURA today and compare. 
Luby Acura on the main I'm Pike, Lancaster. Once again, the number is 1-800-54-ACURA. Call today. All the names, all the games, all the time. Only on ESPN. And how about a nice get well card from the network some of the folks here at hall of fame lanes for uh, janet bueller who at this point in time i'm sure is watching the telecast she's still recovering and doing very nicely and there you see your husband wally who is uh, well he's kind of picked up where she left off here this week trying to run the tournament it's not the same without you janet so uh, make sure you get back next year i think all of us echo those sentiments joining us up in the booth now uh, Commissioner of the PBA, Joe Antonora, and we'll get his thoughts on the senior tour here in a moment or so. Glenn Allison on the right-hand lane leads by 11. Unusual shot here. Ground level. And the swisher, but the seven stands. Again, that light ball getting out that five pin with no problem. There were a lot of those type hits this week with that uh, five pin and the head pin would go right in front of the seven pin. Quite a few solid sevens and solid tens this week uh, as well, though, Mike. Even more solid sevens than we had solid tens, I think, then. You know, it's great, though. The seniors don't groan as much as the touring players. <laughs> well, you develop patience with years, they oh, say. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> Joe, let's talk about the senior tour. I can remember working the very first event back, I think, in like 1980 down in uh, New Orleans, and there were like 60 entries. There were 115 players this week. That's correct. Uh, we were getting more and more players eligible, Denny, every year, and the fields are growing, and uh, we now have to go to two squads. For the first time ever? For the first time ever. Well, it's amazing, and uh, it's going to get tougher and tougher to win on the senior tour when some other gentlemen start to turn 50. Now, Glenn just throws his hands up in the air and says, I need a break up there somewhere, and he gets it with a Brooklyn. Well, he, he got a few of these during the week, and every now and then he gets those feet fast, see the swing away from the body, and the follow-through goes just kind of steering it up there. He just let that ball go, but he trips that six with the three-pin. How about a little help, he says? Oh, no problem. Glenn Carlson threw an excellent shot on lane 40 the last trip. Just like that. Carbon copy. You know, Glenn is involved. They're working in Fresno with uh, one of the collegiate bowling teams there and uh, volunteers his services and uh, just an outstanding job. I understand, Joe, that uh, we're going to have another seniors event uh, in this coming October. Right, Mike. We've added a fourth tournament for 87 we'll be going to Fort Pierce Florida Fort Pierce Bowl with Ken Matthews in October will actually be the kickoff event on a fall, uh, fall tour hey. trying for the double once again the same hit 10 pin stands again Mike left lane just a hair tighter and he can't seem to knock out that 10 pin he's either got to get it up there a little flusher or get a little better lift on those fingers or soften up the speed just a hair all of those are just very subtle adjustments that a bowler will sometimes try and make to get those corner pins out. Well, it's amazing. The fans have really turned out this week, and uh, they enjoy watching the senior players every bit as much as they do the touring players as Carlson converts on the 10 pin. Wouldn't you think that would be so, Joe? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Denny, and uh, I think the uh, seniors enjoy performing. They, they've still got a lot of the ham in them, and uh, very colorful, and they enjoy it, too. Allison up by 10, trying to increase it to 20 with a double in the sixth frame. Joining the senior tour next year, uh, Earl Anthony for sure, I believe. Oh, my goodness. He's Earl the Earl. Pearl. Earl the committed player. at the press luncheon this year for the this tournament that he would bowl here next year. Oh, the love tap on the 10. I tell you what, Glenn better watch it. He went down that time and almost slipped and fell. Carlson with a little disgusted look on his face because when you come in light like that, watch the six pin slide into the channel and then just fall on the 10. It's really a good break, and that can really be a motivator for a bowler. Joe, what do you see three, four years down the road as the future for the senior tour? 
we're our goal our really is not a five-year plan but it'll take about five years mike is to get to a tour of about 12 tournaments uh two a month over a six-month period well uh, you gentlemen are certainly heading in the right direction as evidence of the action here this evening allison comes up with a turkey in the fifth sixth and seventh leads by 30 he's in control here of match number two in these days of self-service gas stations, computerized banking, and understaffed stores, it seems that no one has the time for personal service anymore. Well, at True Value Hardware Stores, we haven't forgotten that we're working for you. And whenever you have a question or a problem with a do-it-yourself project, we'll do our very best to help. So, the next time someone wonders where personal service has gone, you tell them it's still hard at work. Right in here. True Value, more than just a name, it's our way of doing business. Driving somewhere? Call 1-800-BEST-BET and get a room in a Best Western near almost any highway in North America. Best Western is the largest lodging chain in America, Canada, the world. Your best bet everywhere. Call 1-800-BEST-BET. And just in case you don't recognize that uh, gentleman, that's Bruce Pluckon, the curator of the National Bowling Hall of Fame and Museum in St. Louis. And uh, for my money, Mike Durbin, one of the finest sports museums in the country. Have you been through it, Dan? Yes, I have. I uh, really had a chance to go through there earlier this spring. Really is outstanding. Oh, tremendous. Uh, for bowling fans, uh, if you get a chance, right across the street from Bush Stadium. So right. if you're still in a situation, you've got a little vacation time left, you're heading through the Midwest, you're going to stop in St. Louis, do yourself a favor and uh, check out the museum. Boy, it's tremendous. Meanwhile, Glenn Carlson finds himself in a... Bit of a tough spot, down by 30. Tries to break things up a little bit, but uh, you just get the feeling that Glenn is not really comfortable with the angle he's playing. Well, it's just, when you don't carry that half pocket hit, that weak 10, it can do all kinds of things to you with your hand release and then to your head. Because you, then you start trying to fit it in just a little bit tighter to strike, and, and it just plays uh, mind games with you. Bowling is such a mental game. Right now, Mr. Carlson is still potential 236 if he would go all the way out, and Glenn Allison is going at a 228 pace right now if he would spare strike the rest of the way. So we're almost to the point where we say that if you can do it with a pencil, you can do it with a bowling ball, and uh, Carlson better start striking. Glenn Allison breezing here in game number two, catching his breath a little bit, had a tough match with Buss Oswald in the opening game. Boy, what beautiful footwork that time by Glenn Carlson. Did to uh, rush to the line that time. Really took his time, made a classic shot. It, it, and you see the difference when a bowler is not on a strike as to pair when he is on. He's a little more relaxed here. Watch the deep knee bend now. Nice long slide. He gets heavier fingers. See that deep knee bend there? The good follow through. And the heavier fingers is what knocked out the week 10. Sometimes when you have a strike up, you get a little more apprehensive and you don't get as heavy of fingers. Well, Glenn Allison's got a strike up and a couple behind it. He's working on a three-backer at this point. Trying to extend his lead a little bit. Boy, he is throwing it sweet. And this is as good as I've seen Glenn bowl in a long time. And I think it's as good as uh, Glenn Carlson has seen him bowl in a long time as well. Believe me, Allison, you know, made our championship run, but he did not bowl this well last night. I watched him for most of the night. And he's really taking advantage of the fact that he's gotten in here executing beautifully. Glenn with six career 300 games, and as we mentioned, three of those came in one night. He strikes here. It's the lockout shot then. Well, let's see if he likes it. A little high. See the feet get fast again? His mistake on lane 30 has been high a couple of times. Well, it... It's, it's not the lane. It's the push away and, and then chasing after it. He gets that ball down too quick. Now watch the feet go quick to catch up. And the ball gets outside and then pointed up high right away. When I mean outside, I mean at the top of his backswing. It's what they call a little swing out. Allison's been very fortunate too, though, Mike, uh, with respect to the fact that he's thrown it through the nose three or four times now and gotten away every time. Well, hey, when you're getting the breaks and things are going your way, that kind of thing happens. And meanwhile, you're Glenn Carlson, you're sitting on the bench thinking, holy cow, how can he keep getting all those breaks? Right now he's thinking, i got a strike here to stay in this match. 
Sometimes getting that first double can unlock the door. Possible 226. He's going to need all of them. Almost a solid seven that we were talking about, but it knocked it out of there. Well, he's a pretty cool customer, this Mr. Carlson. 50 years old, just two seniors tournaments and been in the championship round both times. Got a strike every time here just to make Allison Mark. On the television pair, Mike, uh, Glenn Carlson with games of 268 and 235, averaging 251.5, the highest of the top five finalists. They throw all those pins away, though, Tanner. It only matters what you knock down It's a shame tonight. you can't bring a shopping bag or something. Bring a couple with you on Wednesday nights. Boy, this is desperation shot here. Come up the ladder a little bit. Not quite. Ten pin stands up, and that uh, the bowler nemesis for uh, Glenn Carlson here this evening. And you see the difference between the, carry, the bowler that carries and the bowler that doesn't. Three ten pins on this left lane, and this one's lighter. You think you might get a blower here. Watch the six pin. Slides off into the channel, doesn't hit the ten. And Allison was carrying those hits. Carlson didn't. That's why Allison's going to go on the bowl, Daryl Curtis. Well, only a possible 205. That's not enough. And Glenn Allison is uh, making a serious run here, Mike Durbin, and becoming the first player to win this tournament back to back, isn't he? Absolutely. Uh, Tell you, he's looking better and better as each frame goes by. Because he's just throwing every ball in the pocket. Boy, he looks relaxed to me. Very confident. And of course, you'll want to stay tuned in just a moment or so because Mike Durbin's average builder coming your way. This is a kind of a special tip. That you know, if I, if I watch any more of those, Mike, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be averaging 298 by next year because <laughs> you've given me more advice this summer then I can, I, my mind can't, I can't hold on any more of it. It's like you're doing with me <laughs> in another sport, is that it? Oh, got to give them a hard time. There's a terrific job with those average builders. We get comments from folks all over the country. Rightfully so. Oh, my goodness. A little disco move that time for Glenn Allison, and uh, he's in a position now to shoot a little 247 at Glenn Carlson. Glenn had eight strikes the first game, and in this game right now, see he's got seven. He could get nine if he gets a couple more, so it's a pretty good average. Eight a game, I tell you what, you're tough to beat when you start getting eight strikes yeah. a game. You give me eight strikes a game, I'll figure out what to do with the spares. Nice profile shot there. Both players. Beautiful bowling establishment, Hall of Fame lanes, in the Hall of Fame city. Glenn Allison, well, that thing's spinning like a top out there, but the seven pin hangs on. Nice round of applause, though, as Allison matches victory number two. And both players with clean games. I think we've only had one open frame so far with all our senior bowlers. Uh, That's right. Buzz Oswald missed the 2-4-5. Other than that, you're right. Well, I think it's a misconception. People think that uh, as you get a little bit older, you can't bowl as well. And uh, that's certainly not the case. Glenn Allison proved that point this evening. Another handshake, another win. How about another wink for the camera, Glenn Allison? Not, not this time, but we'll see him in slow motion. Glenn Allison with a 237-205 victory in game number two. As he just continues to move right up the ladder here in the Ebonite PBA Senior Championship. Next match, there you see him, Glenn Allison and Daryl Curtis, the average builder, coming up next. Mornings at our summer place start early. While the sun's just a glimmer, I'm up fixing those homemade biscuits everyone loves. Why, I don't think the birds wake up till they smell those biscuits. And there's always someone who seems to know just when that coffee's brewed and that bacon's crisp. And sure enough, he's ready for a helping. Well, all I can say to that is, good morning. Welcome to McDonald's. Serve up summertime at McDonald's. This can happen to good bowlers on lanes with limited distance dressing or short oil. Short oil means oil out to here, 26 feet or less from the foul line. Short oil can make your ball react unpredictably, a big problem. Now, the solution from Ebonite, the new Firebolt SO, a urethane ball with a unique additive. To make it roll long, hit hard, and not overreact on today's short oil conditions, Ebonite's new Firebolt SO is the solution to the problems of short oil. I've instructed many pupils over the years, and many of them have trouble understanding what I'm telling them is wrong with their game. I tell them that their backswing is too high or that their backswing comes away from their body, various other things. And they really can't understand it because they can't see themselves doing it. 
They can't visualize, therefore, what they should do to correct it. Well, I think I've found a teaching device that will not only enable them to see their mistakes, but to see when they do it properly and teach them by the means of muscle memory to do it the same way time after time after time. The device that we found is called Bowl C. And as you can see, Bowl C is a mirror that sits across the lane. The mirror is high enough so that the ball rolls underneath it. And I am able to see my entire body in the mirror throughout the entire approach. The mirror has two crosshairs on it. It has a vertical crosshair and a horizontal crosshair. The purpose of the vertical crosshair is to line it up with my swing or your swing so that I can see when I'm swinging it straight. The purpose of the horizontal crosshair has many purposes. I could line it up with my head. I could line it up with my shoulders. In this case, I've got it lined up where I want the ball to be on my first step. That right at where that crosshair is, the two of them meet together, is where my ball should be on the first step. There are a lot of different things that we can learn from this mirror, but the idea behind it is that I do it right and it teaches my muscles when I'm doing it correctly. Then after I do it enough times, seeing myself do it correctly, I develop what is called muscle memory, and I do it automatically that way, and I don't have to think about it anymore. Let me show you. As I said, the vertical crosshair here is lined up with my swing. You can see that it's right in line with my swing here. And as I take my step and push the ball away, you can see that the ball goes right out to where those two crosshairs meet. As I let it swing, it's right in line with that vertical crosshair. Now, if I should happen to swing it offline, out this way, I could see that. Or if I swung it the other way, inside line, I could see that. This can not only be used as a teaching aid to develop my arm swing, it can help me with my push away. It can help me with my walk to the line. It can help me with my back swing. It can help me with my follow through, with my finish position, and yes, even with my hand release. I help myself with my hand release watching it here on bowl C. Now I'm gonna throw a shot for you here and just give you an idea of what it looks like. And what you should watch for is to see how it's lined up my swing with that vertical line. Here we go. Pretty good teaching device, isn't it? I really think it has tremendous potential. Well, we've had a lot of fun over the summer. We've learned a lot of things and hopefully we've built our average up somewhat. We'll see you again next year. And here's an update on the Career PBA senior earnings. Dick Weber didn't quite get to the championship around this evening. Neither did Carmen Salvino. Boy, both of them were close, and they're on top of the list at this point. Billy Walden had an excellent tournament here a couple of years ago with 42,198. And Les Sykes and Bill Beach round out the top five. Tita Semez and Glenn, Car or Glenn Allison rather, in the eighth position. Both of those gentlemen in a position, if things work out, where they might be able to add $16,000 to their earnings here this evening. But uh, we'll just have to wait a couple of more minutes to find out what happens there. Meanwhile, though, down to the practice pair we'll go to Mike Durbin. And also, there you see the top seed, Tita Semez. Michael? I am with Tita Samez, the man who's led this tournament so far for 36 games. Tita, the first question I've got for you is you had a little practice session with Freddie Borden earlier in the week, and he gave you a tip about hand positions, and you've tried that this week. What have you tried, and how's it working, and why have you done it? Well, what I've tried this week is uh, trying to keep my thumb in towards my body until it gets past my hip, because if I don't do that, what happens is on a push away, when I open my thumb up to the right, my swing bumps out. It, it goes behind my back and bumps out to the right where it makes me pull the ball. This way, uh, and overturn it, of course. And this way, uh, if I keep my thumb in, it gets my roll up a little bit higher, and my shot isn't to the left of my target. It's on target or to the right of it. And uh, that's what I'm looking for. So it's worked pretty well for you so far this week, then? It sure has. I've hit the thumb hole a couple times this week, which usually don't happen. So your track's been higher this week than it normally is? Definitely higher. Yeah, definitely. Tita, you've been a member of the PBA for 27 years. Some people say you've been the best part-time player in the history of the PBA. That's a long time to be successful. What do you attribute that uh, longevity and that success to? Practice. Bowling with my kid back home, Tommy, in the league, in the summer league, and uh, also uh, bowling on Friday nights with him. Uh, I just keep at it. I just don't... Uh, I don't, uh, I don't think I have missed two weeks in, in 25 years of bowling 
except for vacation time. That's it. I just keep on bowling. So the practice is going to pay off tonight, huh? Well, I hope so. We'll see. I got one game to do it, and we'll see what happens. Okay, Dan, he says he practices a lot, and we're going to see if it pays off in just two games. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that people realize what an excellent player Tita Semez is, but he's going to have to wait because Glenn Allison and Daryl Curtis are going to fight for the opportunity to play Mr. Semez for the championship. Hi. I've been looking all over for this terrific video cassette I heard about. It's called Not So Great Moments in Sports. It, like one scene is where Billy Martin tries to give an ump a shoe shine. That's a fantastic video. My favorite part is where John McEnroe plays tennis with his orange juice. I hear there's a scene where Reggie Jackson protests a Gaylord Perry spitball with a visual aid. Yeah. I love it where a kicker tries to play quarterback. Not So Great Moments is 45 minutes of the funniest sports footage I've ever seen. Great. So you have it. No. It's not in video stores yet. Now what do I do? You get it free. Let me understand. You don't have the video, but you're going to tell me how to get it free. Right. Am I missing something? You're missing out on Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated? I love SI. What does Sports Illustrated have to do with it? You get not-so-great moments in sports free with your paid subscription. Oh, I let my subscription run out. Well, now's a perfect time to go for it again. You get 25 weeks of America's best sports coverage, including the Pro Football Spectacular with all the picks, previews, and profiles, and the beautiful swimsuit issue. I like that. Everybody likes that. You even get a handy NFL schedule. And not-so-great moments in sports? You get it all. I do. How? Just call Sports Illustrated's toll-free number. Wait a minute. All that great footage has got to be worth a fortune. I ought to know. Yeah, I'll bet they raised the price of the magazine, right? Uh-uh. It's over 47% off the cover price. Just three installments of $9.89 each. You can even put it on a credit card. No kidding. I get 25 weeks of SI, including the Pro Football Spectacular, the football schedule, the swimsuit issue, and the video cassette free. You get it all. Just call 1-800-621-7000. I gotta get to a phone. What's that number again? Here. 1-800-621-7000. Have you heard of not-so-great moments in sports? <laughs> and coming up this Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Thoroughbred Racing on ESPN from Monmouth Park. Should be some outstanding racing action coming your way there as uh, they'll be racing for $250,000. Coming up at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time this Saturday. Handshake between Daryl Curtis on your right and Glenn Allison, who is now two for two at match play competition in the Ebonite PBA Senior Championship here at the Hall of Fame Lanes in Canton, Ohio. And the definite favorite in this game has to be, in my opinion, Allison, because I would think that Curtis is going to be just a little bit nervous. Well, it's a good pick considering the fact that Allison's averaging 238 for the opening two games. And there you see the baby split on the left-hand side of the lane, opening shot for Daryl Curtis. Not exactly the way you want to start. Well... Bowling on television is a learning experience, and sometimes you just have to do it in order to learn it, and you have to take your lump sometimes. I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen to Darrell, but... First ever appearance on national television. He has uh, bowled on regional television. And that's the way you want to start, right? That'll definitely make him feel better. Pick up the old 2-7, and you can see him leaning back and breathing out that air. Played it perfectly for that outside line. Came in, hit the two pin on the left, and deflected into the seventh. And uh, here's a view from the cockpit. The broadcast booth. Glenn Allison. Boy, he has uh, started with a bang in both of his opening matches. That's one of the keys in match play competition, Then is to get out ahead of your opponent early. And that... Uh, oh, well, I've, I've talked too much about the light ball. It just keeps striking. It's just like any other ball. He's throwing strikes with it. I was going to say, come on now, after a while. But, boy, look at the numbers, 239 to 223. Bounces back with a 237. That's about as consistent as you're going to get. And he had seven strikes in one game and eight in the other, so. Glenn Allison now 10 and 5 in championship round appearances with a 201 average, but uh, that number is steadily on the climb. Helped that one a little bit. If you watch the follow through, it went left. And, and you, you see him, he did just that. He knew he had done it. You were telling me last night that if you watch the follow through, it'll instantly tell you what the ball's gonna do. So many times it will. Watch his follow through here. Head steady, 
see the follow through go left that follow through is a weather vane as to what happened at the release and at the point of release there wasn't what Glenn wanted two four five and this is the one spare he said he did not want to shoot today that's why he chopped the two off the five last night in the final frame and had an opportunity really that he could have missed the championship round there's an adjustment for that you got to hit that lead pin which he does but it goes around the four so many ways to miss it back to live action and very quickly Daryl Curtis steps up and takes advantage of the opportunity and Daryl Curtis says, what do you mean tough bowling on television here? This is easy. This is fun. 54 years of age. His 87 average under 200. But look at this week, 212.69. High game of 279. And he just flat blistered him last night. And he shot that 279 as his wife looks on against Tita Cements. First game of match play last night. Boy, she really had a tough time last night watching him bowl, believe me. Oh! time as Terrell puts his hand up and his wife says well geez we were due for a break somewhere and there you see the dour expression of Glenn Allison nothing worse than watching your opponent go up there and throw it through the beak and strike and uh, strike uh, yep that'll tear your heart out won't it never bothered me a bit oh, oh, <laughs> you've been pounding the rosin bag and everything else come on and all Allison can do is step back up and make another good shot on the right hand lane Oh, that one is way outside. Oh. Came back, Glenn Allison flat hooked that one from one end of the lane to the other. <laughs> wow, we really, folks. There's not that much room to aim at. I mean, I don't know why this one came back, but it did. Boy, that's seven straight strikes on the right-hand lane, and uh, I think he likes it over there. I tell you what, instead of Mr. 900, I'm going to call him Mr. Fingers from here on out. Well, right now he's down 22 pins. He better be Mr. Strike on this ball. Oh, there's the adjustment for the 2-4-5, and it's a 6-7-10. <laughs> it's 7 again, but a tougher 7. He's got to go for this, then. He's First split of the night uh, for Glenn Allison. Watch the follow-through. Kind of points it, steers it up there again. The swing is just getting away from his body a little bit in the backswing, and he's steering it on this left lane. He won't trust it that it's going to come back right through the heart of the pins and doesn't break it up. We mentioned last game that he broke up that hit and left only the six pin, and he's going for this. Boldly went for it, cost him four pins. Well, I think you're right, though. He was in a position where he pretty much had to early in the match, but... Daryl Curtis at this point on a double is in an excellent position. My place or your place? My place, of course. My place has delicious food and cozy dining. Fresh homemade pizza with a variety of toppings oozing with mozzarella. Hot and cold subs, spaghetti, rigatoni, stromboli, and my place has specials like mouth-watering manicotti and fresh veal parmesan. Plus, you can eat and relax in the dining room, or my place has takeout available with a convenient drive through window. Let's go. Where? My place, of course, with five convenient locations. Next week on Warner Cable. Tuesday. There's nothing like the real thing. And MTV's got him. Abby Hoffman guest DJ. And Wednesday, a compelling documentary tracing 30 years of conflict. Oh, thank you. Vietnam, the 10,000 day war on A&E. Saturday, the Vietnam nightmare continues with war stories on HBO. Abby Hoffman, Vietnam War Stories. Capture a piece of history next week. From tea to green, television's best golf coverage is on ESPN. The greatest tournaments, including Grand Slam events, the U.S. Open, British Open, and the PGA Championship. Outstanding PGA Tour, LPGA, and Senior PGA Tour golfers. Featuring Jack Nicklaus, Pat Bradley, and Arnold Palmer. ESPN's live coverage from the world's most spectacular courses brings you closer than ever to the players and the action. The very best is par for the course on ESPN. And here's a look back at the uh, PBA Senior Championship history. Last year, of course, Glenn Allison. Year before, Billy Walden with a big victory. 
And, of course, the great one and only Carmen Salvino and Hall of Famer Dick Weber, 1983. Both of those two gentlemen making a bid for the championship round here last night and uh, narrowly missed. And they polled each other. Carmen Salvino leaving a solid eight pin that crossed in the championship round. I'd have hated to bend that eight pin the way he stares him down. Ooh. Daryl Curtis going to cross over and carry again. Waves it goodbye. And uh, some things are just meant to be. And I'll tell you what right now, Dan. If I were Tita Semez over on the practice pair, I would be loving this. I would want to get Glenn Allison out of there. As he crosses over the Brooklyn, and the two-pin trips out the four like a right-hander. As I'm guaranteeing it, Tita would rather bowl Daryl Curtis than Glenn Allison. Because he's never won a title? Right. And, and he's just not hitting the pocket. He's missed the pocket now three times in a row, four out of five, and he's shooting two teams. You just don't figure a guy's going to get keep getting those kind of breaks. Well, do you think that Glenn Allison's out of this match yet? No, I don't think Glenn Allison's out of this match yet, because, unless Daryl continues to get kind of that kind of luck where he carries crossovers and everything. Well, he makes his spare. Plenty of room yet for Allison, but he's going to have to get lined up in a hurry, as there you see Tita Semez, the top seed. Tita with four PBA titles, trying to make it number five and a return engagement at the Firestone Tournament of Champions. And Glenn, who's had no trouble with lane 40, just needs to take him one frame at a time and put a little pressure on Daryl Curtis and see what happens. All right, let's see if he can make the double. If he can make the double, then we'll see how Curtis responds. Well, it's been a great summer through and through, and so many people help us week in and week out. A lot of people don't realize uh, when you get a chance to talk about some of these folks. Of course, National Tournament Director Harry Golden, my good friend and partner Harry Smith uh, handling the statistical analysis tonight. Kevin Shippey, the public relations director of the PBA, along with that press corps, Jimmy Collins and Mike Sands, and of course, the one and only ESPN television coordinator, Chuck Pisano. Guys, thanks a lot for a great summer, and uh, we'll hope to see you next year. I echo those sentiments. Allison looks for the big double. Got to have it at this point. Oh, a little shaker, a little mover. And Allison kind of climbs back up out of the grave. But the follow-through was right there. Watch the follow-through, Dan. Watch the follow-through. Right on up that time. With the open hand, comes in light. The head pin goes to the wall and does its job on the 4-5-7. Back live, Daryl's up quickly. And through the heart again. He's only hit the pocket one time. Breaks up the split one more time. And his wife saying, on that spare. Come on, make that spare. I think Sandy at this point uh, would like to maybe coach him a little bit if she'd have an opportunity. She's saying, hey, you're supposed to go on the one, two, not through the one, two, three. <laughs> oh, no, not the chop of the spare. Two pin right off the four, and uh, that's the first mistake thus far, open wise, for Daryl Curtis. See, and suddenly it's down to a 24 pin match right now. Allison steps up and throws a couple more strikes. He may regret going for that split and costing himself four pins. He'd only be down 20 right now if he'd have simply got nine out. Daryl Curtis bowled absolutely brilliantly last night. Made a real run at the lead. Matter of fact, if he could have beaten Semez by 13 pins last night, he'd have led the tournament. So he bounces back with a big strike in the seventh frame on lane 39. Boy, hang on. We got a wild semifinal game. After years of research, the high-tech laboratories of Columbia 300 have created the most advanced urethane bowling ball ever made. The 100% urethane Columbia 300 U-Dot. The extraordinary U-Dot solves the inherent problems of lope and wobble. Its devastating pen power and superior lane control characteristics are unequaled. If you bowl to win, the Columbia 300 U-Dot is the ultimate weapon. It's like no ball ever made before. Sold only in lanes and pro shops. It's touch and go, but you're thinking about those Mars roasted almonds. You're looking for that little reward. Yeah, you're hanging on because you're dreaming about that Mars buttery caramel. You've got your mind on a Mars. A Mars bar makes it all worthwhile. You burn your Mars bar. One great little reward. Canton, Ohio, synonymous with the uh, National Football League Hall of Fame. And there you see Earl 
Schreiber, Board of Trustees, NFL Hall of Fame. And uh, if you've never had an opportunity to go through that museum, and while we're on the subject of sports museums tonight, boy, it is absolutely fantastic. Have you been through it, Dad? Yep. Yeah, I have too. Hey, I'm a Browns fan. It's a treat. There's a lot of Browns and a lot of Rams in that oh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you'd get that in somehow. <laughs> Allison trails by 24, but uh, he's going to try and uh, help himself out a little bit here, working on a double. And we're in the seventh frame, semifinal game. A little tight, little oh. high, and the seven pin is the last to fall, but it finally dropped. The four and the seven going down slowly, but they went down. Better late than never. All right. Key shot of the match coming up right here, I think. As we see, he's on a turkey. Allison is trailing by 14 pins. Can really put the pressure on Curtis now with a strike. But the left-hand lane has been a problem. That's right. So he has to discipline himself right now to make that good shot. His mistakes, for the most part, have been through the nose high on the left-hand lane. Let's see. Well, is that lane hooking that much more, Mike, or is he just not making good shots? It's him. It's not the lane. He just gets those feet fast, and the follow-through goes right. Watch the feet again. Quick, quick, quick. See the swing away in the back? Now watch the follow-through. In and then back out. Not trusting it. Just did not execute good. 3-6-10 needs to convert this to stay in the match. No problem. Darrell Curtis eyeing the scoreboard. Curtis leads by 17. He is working on a strike in the seventh. And uh, with the double here, could really apply some pressure. Allison still potential 209. Curtis going at a 206 pace right now. High again, leaves only the 10 pin. He better thought shot, about his though, in the right hand lane. A little bit better shot. That keeps Allison in the match. So Allison is going to step up. And no matter what Daryl does with this spare and in the next frame, Allison is going to have a chance to take the lead in the match if he can strike out. <laughs> Just hangs on to make that tip in his wife. <laughs> His wife mirrors exactly what's going on down there by her face. Got to tell you a funny story. She said, Denny, last night, it was 25 years ago last night that I had my first daughter. And she said the labor pains were unbelievably painful, I guess, best way to say it. But she said, I think last night watching the championship round was even worse than that, if you can believe it. Light. Oh, no, not now. Not the washout. One, well, three, six, seven. And if he fails to convert this, if he would get nine out, it's going to be a two-pin match. Boy, this has been uh, back and forth, back and forth. Both players uh, with a pair of opens should Daryl Curtis not convert on the washout. And really, Daryl Curtis has only hit the one-two pocket twice. Giving it a run. Oh, what a bad break. My goodness, off the board, but not quite. Seven-pin remains. So the best that Daryl Curtis could possibly shoot if he would strike out would be 201. And as we see him hit it over the right of the hip and what he wants to slide it over, but he goes to the sideboard and then straight back out. The difference in this match right now, Dan, is that four pins in count that Glenn Allison lost back in the fourth frame when he boldly went for that split and wound up getting seven out. If he'd have got nine, he'd be ahead by two pins instead of down by two. Good point. If he'd have got eight, we'd be tied. Well, we're all down to the ninth and 10th now. This has been his good lane. Plenty of room, and look at this. My goodness, the 4-5, one pin rolling around, and it's not going to help. In disbelief, Glenn Allison turns around, but uh, realistically, Mike, uh, you can make the 4-5. And again, the ball is only 14 pounds, 15 ounces. Watch it deflect here. It'll go to the right. The head pin goes to the left. It doesn't come off the sideboard, get tied up in the channel, and left the 4-5. He thinks it's going to get a wall shot. A couple years ago, he left a 5-7 against Dick Weber in the same type of situation and missed it. Move to the left to try for the conversion. Let's see if he can fit it in. Nope. He knew he missed it. Well, 186 now, the best that Glenn Allison could possibly post. Well, but force Daryl Curtis to mark. 
if he can post it, it has a chance to be a winner because Daryl Curtis is on shaky ice right now. Or Meanwhile, Tita, <laughs> Tita Shemez standing by and waiting for the title match. Allison gives it room this time on lane 39 and a little bit too much room. Two pin stain. Sparrow to strike is going to finish with 176, forcing Daryl Curtis to get seven pins on two balls. I which, think you can handle that. Uh, yes, I do too. Well, Daryl counting his blessings because he was in a position where he could have had the match pretty well wrapped up, kind of gave it back, and then uh, let Allison return the favor. Nevertheless, uh, really an outstanding week. I don't think people realize, Mike, how tough it is to come back and try to defend a championship on the PBA Tour, whether it's the seniors or the normal touring players. It is exceedingly difficult. I know uh, Ted Hannes did it in Peoria, and uh, it's just a tough task to do. And, of course, Walter Ray Williams, Jr., this past That's summer. Right. I was trying to think of that. It didn't come to my mind. <laughs> uh, well, Walter would have reminded us, I'm sure, if he were in the area. But Allison with a handshake for Daryl Curtis, as Daryl at this point needs six pins. Oh, seven pins. No, actually six. Six pins, right? Yeah. Six pins to give him 177. And that's how you want to win a match when you only need six. Got nice and loose, threw it out there, and of course hit the pocket. So Daryl Curtis will advance. And there you see Sandy <laughs> trying to get excited, but I think she's still looking up at the scoreboard. I don't think she's sure if Daryl's in the title match or not. <laughs> well, he is, let me assure. What's going to happen to her in the championship game? Well, it depends how close it is. <laughs> Well, the scores weren't necessarily as high, but it was an entertaining match. Well, let's see if that one match can settle him down and he can start making better shots against Tita Semez in the championship matches. He has a chance. One thing's for sure, we're going to give that red coat to somebody new this mm -hmm. year. Well, Glenn Allison's got one, but I'm sure he was, would have loved to have added another one to his repertoire. And so we have now finished out the semifinal game. It was... Uh, a question of survival for Daryl Curtis. 190 to 176. Stay tuned. Coming up, the championship game between Tita Semez and Daryl Curtis. This buds for all that you do. Like many before, you came here asking for just one thing. A chance. Sadowski. Shibowski. The word is pronounced Shibowski. You're here to make a new start. But starting out's the hard part. Whatever the test, you give it your best. You show you got the hard cards. You, you make America work and this time's for you. Here's to you. Beechwood Aids for that clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. They said, You make America work, and this bug's for you. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Berman. At the Sports Center at 1130 Eastern Time, Larry Burnett and I will be tracking the hitting parade of Paul Molitor. He looks to stretch his streak to 34. Can the Tigers overtake the Blue Jays in first place in the AL East? All that and more on the Sports Center at 11:30. And you see what happens when you win on the PBA Tour. You get a nice kiss on the cheek. Daryl looks a little concerned, but Sandy, she's got everything, I think, handled at this point. Don't you think, Mike Durbin? As you take a look at the matches here in the Evanite PBA Senior Championship, Allison made it through the first couple, but ran into Daryl Curtis in the semifinal game. Well, as you mentioned there, it was a question of survival, and Daryl Curtis proved that he can survive out here. The question is now, can he settle those nerves down and go on to defeat Tita Semez to win his first PBA title of any kind? Well, you had an opportunity to talk to Tita just a couple of minutes ago. He appears very confident heading into the championship game. He appears confident, Dan, but he's also a little tight. Uh, you know, we noticed that today when we were with him earlier today, that he's just a little bit tense and everything. He really wants this. You can sense it. Sometimes when you're that tight, it's hard to execute properly. Boy, it's been a marvelous summer on ESPN, and we'll recap a little bit and take a look back at some of the other champions throughout the 87 summer tour as we take a look as Dick Weber opened things up with a last-second victory over uh, J.B. Blaylock. When J.B. unfortunately missed that 10-pin in the 10th frame, 
Then we saw Furpo and Warren come through in the clutch to win the doubles. Mark Baker, I don't think could, couldn't have bowled much better in that Kessler Open. Well, he got that break in that second frame and capitalized on it, went on to shoot, what, 250 and defeat David Ozio. And then out of the gate quickly for a very talented left-hander, Parker Bone the third. Parker was very impressive in beating Scott Devers. Brian Voss finally got rid of his nemesis and won from that top spot in Southern California. And then down in Tucson, Devers came bouncing back with a big victory in that Miller Lite Challenge. Very exciting tournament when he struck out in the 10th frame there and, and beat McDowell. It was a great match that time. And on subjects of striking out uh, to win, Kent Wagner and Philip Ringner. Boy, did they put on a show down in Austin, Texas? Maybe our best match of the entire summer. Ringner fi finished out there with 248. Kent Wagner needing all three in the 10th, struck it out for 249. And then we watched on one on to see Walter Ray defeat all the left-handers in Edmond, Oklahoma. He was very, very impressive. And for the first time in many, many years, the tournament, the PBA tournament, went up to Green Bay, Wisconsin, the capacity crowds, and it was Rowdy Morrow and Mickey Spezio who held on to win there. And again, the team of McDowell and Weber went all the way to the top, but Morrow struck out in that 10th frame, forcing Weber to do it, and Weber just that time wasn't up to it. And Mark Roth with the great, great 299, then went on uh, to bowl Chris Warren for the title in uh, Buffalo, and boy, that was probably one of the most exciting shows of the summer. Really a highlight when we saw that 299, just an electric show, Roth and one Many people may think, you know, one of the best performances ever in the history of, of professional bowling. Something that people will say, hey, I was such and such a time when Mark Roth did that. Then we watched in Canada, Harry Sullins say, hey, I'm going to win. And he went on and did it. Shot a big 240 game, won easy. Well, we've been so fortunate, Mike, the last couple of summers on ESPN to see some great, great matches. And hopefully the title match tonight will be just as good. Well, if it's anywhere near as good as it was last year when it came right down to the final ball, the fans are in for a treat, so don't go away. Okay, for the accountants uh, watching the telecast this evening, let's take a look at the top money winners on the PBA Tour. Pete Weber with 156000 plus still leading the way. Well, there's still five tournaments to go to see who's going to be that leading money winner. McCordick still in second with 144. Ballard in third. Walter Ray still needs a little bit to get to 100000 there. And, of course, the great Marshall Holman. Mike, it's amazing, too, because realistically, all the way down to Dave Ferraro, eight different players have a shot of winning $100,000 on the PBA Tour. That's just great, Denny. I think that's outstanding. It shows that bowling is progressing. The PBA is getting more and more to shoot for, and guys can make a real decent living out there. And what about knocking down those pins? Well, resting comfortably in Medford, Oregon, is Marshall Holman with a two-pin lead. He's looking good to win that George Young High Average Award. Pete Weber in second. Also, Dave Ferraro with 216, all being boss with 215. Well, when you look at those numbers, the way they stack up, Mark Roth near the end of the summer probably bowling as well as he has in many years. And just the scores have been high all year long. In 10th place on the average list is 214. That used to lead it easy. So the scores have been higher this year, Dan. Well, I know that uh, your commentary on the exciting balls, the new balls that are out on the market, and also the pins, those scores just keep going up and up and up. As Mike and I have mentioned, we've had a, just a lot of fun this past summer uh, covering bowling on ESPN, professional bowling, that is. And there, there are many, many people that have helped us along the way, and we'd like to have you take a look at some of those folks, maybe pat them on the back. When that first warning itch of athlete's foot strikes, you want to stop that itch in seconds. Not even the leading remedy says it can do that, but Absorbing Junior can. Absorbing Junior also kills athlete's foot fungus on contact. So when that first warning itch of athlete's foot strikes, why wait 24 hours for relief when Absorbing Junior can stop that itch in seconds? Absorbing Junior can do that. It really can. I can't marry you. Why? I'm only six years younger. <laughs> oh, I don't care about that. What do you care about? My hair? My tie? Your you breakfast. Like this? Yeah, it's old-fashioned. Hey, I'm an old guy. All those years of sugar and preservatives. Uh, <laughs> you're right. Healthful Nutri-Grain. Only the whole grain, with no preservatives and no mm. sugar added. That's good. Now will you marry me? <laughs> I thought you were five years younger. Kellogg's Nutri-Grain. <laughs> 
you could win a vacation anywhere in the nation in the Dutch Boy Nationwide Sweepstakes Sale going on right now. The grand prize is a bundle of vacation certificates to pay for airline tickets, hotels, cruises, or tours anywhere in the nation. So come on in and register to win the vacation you've dreamed about. Plus, get great savings on Dutch Boy products during the Nationwide Sweepstakes Sale at participating retailers. Dutch Boy never lets up. He always looks good. He works hard for your money. Stand up and cheer. It's live college football on ESPN. Every Saturday, America's hardest-hitting roster of nationally ranked powers provides exciting action on television's best college football schedule. Defending national champ Penn State, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, and UCLA are some of the top teams you'll see live in action every week. Join the cheering fans for top college football. Saturdays on ESPN. And there's only two of them left here in the Ebonite PBA Senior Championship. Tita Semez to your left, Daryl Curtis on your right. And uh, this one is for $16,000 and a beautiful brand new red sports coat. And ironically, uh, the man in his first television appearance with no experience, as opposed to the veteran, I think is more relaxed. I really think Daryl Curtis right now is more relaxed than Tita Semez. I've never seen Tita so uptight. Well, he has not won a singles title since 1977 so he is hungry for the victory for a number of different reasons obviously sixteen thousand dollars on top but i think you have to keep proving to yourself that you can win that's right and that's exactly the point it's been 10 years since that's happened for him and uh, you begin to doubt yourself Ooh. all right <laughs> <laughs> well he's an exciting spare shooter there's no question about that first look at uh, tita Semez, anthony tita Semez. And if you get him in the right mood once in a while, he'll even sing a little Frank Sinatra for you. Oh, will he really? Oh, okay. yeah. He can sing. That. He can bowl, too. Good law. Good shot. Left that four pin right out of the gate. The right lane for Tita is hooking more. And that's where he played all week long, right at that first arrow. All week long. Well, he knows what it's like to strike here at Hall of Fame lanes and Canton finished third here a year ago and also has a fourth place finish and a 14th place finish in this championship but uh, he's never won this would be his best opportunity to do just that at the four pin a lot of speed very little hook won his first PBA title all the way back in 1968 when he captured the Ebonite Gold Cup in Mountainside New Jersey 53 years of age and still smiling, Anthony Tita Semez. I remember that tournament because that's where I bowled my first sanctioned 300 game. No kidding. Yeah. Did well, you get a patch or what? I got a ring. Oh, Dennis. that's right. Patch beats a ring. No, ring beats a patch any time. Yes. A ring ring beats a patch. You still have that ring? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What says 20 questions I'm asking? I don't even know. Back to the championship match. That's a hurry. Leaves the seventh in. But a decent start for Tita. I mean, he's uptight right now. This is getting him a little bit loose. He hit the pocket his first two shots. This may be another survival game right here, Dan. It's just which bowler can survive through the 10 frames. Well, Tita Semez has a wealth of experience. Been there many, many times. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's not so good. No problem. He's a very good uh, spare shooter, wouldn't you say, Mike? He's an excellent bowler all the way through. Tremendous athlete. Five-step player. Watch his deep knee bend here with the right knee. Watch the right knee bend. Head down. Follow through comes up. Nice form. Curtis. Ooh, he's getting looser and more confident. I'll tell you what, if he can put a double on the board right now as his wife looks on again, he is really going to make Tita squeeze that ball a little bit more. And he looks just calm and loose and relaxed now. now I don't know if he's a good poker player. I don't know. He only won the Washington State match play event to qualify for the U.S. Open back in 1980. Has been a PBA member only five years. A little different than some of the other finalists who are lifetime professional bowlers and somebody dropped something right in Daryl Curtis's backswing and he had the presence of mind to pull up and reload as they say boy that could 
change this match dramatically because uh, Curtis was working on a strike in the second. Let's see if he's able to uh, it's gather so, his senses. So hard to do that, Dan. Oh, oh, he did it, though. Yeah. He got it back. Yeah, he sure did. Well, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to make it up there. Playing way outside now. Outside the first arrow. And it's just going to make it at the last second. Comes up light in the one-two pocket, sends the head pin to the wall, and gets that five, six, ten. Back to work for Tita Simaz in the third. Trails by 11. Right there for Tita. Big shot coming up right here. Daryl Curtis gets up, changes chairs. See, as opposed to, to Glenn Allison watching his follow-through almost be able to dictate every shot, Tita has very much the same follow-through all, through, all the time. But what happens with Tita is that sometimes he clears that thumb clean and other times it drags and he doesn't get it out as quickly and he goes a little bit over the top of the ball or he doesn't get an exit difference of time between the thumb and the fingers and it's not as good a roll. He needs to roll one here. Needs a double to really keep things tight, like the shot he does carry on lane 39. So for Tita Semez, it's a double. Curtis is on a double. Don't go away. We've got a very good title match coming your way. Hi, I'm Wayne Angelo, sales manager of Wolf Ford in Lancaster. We appreciate all the customers who have made us very successful this year, one of the most successful years we've had. We're running out of inventory, and at closeout time, people look for high inventories and good deals. We have the good deals, but our inventory is running out. We want to take care of you. We want your business. Please come in and see us while we still have enough inventory that we can professionally serve you and sell you the product you want at the best price at Wolf Ford in Lancaster. This weekend on Warner Cable, meet the pros. Saturday, it's the best of the best when Boris Becker, John McEnroe, and Mats Willander take to the courts for the ATP Pro Tennis Championships. Catch it live on USA. And Sunday, ESPN's got your ticket to pro football. Grab a front row seat at the 50-yard line when the L.A. Rams take on the San Diego Chargers. ATP Tennis, Rams versus Chargers. Go pro this weekend. And there's a look at a uh, healthy prize list this week in the Ebonite PBA Senior Championship. 16,000 big ones on top. She's not a bad payday for second, but I don't think either one of these guys wants to finish second. No, they don't. <clears throat> when you think that, that most of these seniors spent the bulk of their career bowling for three and $5,000 first place prizes, and now they get a chance as a senior to win 16,000 first. Well, if uh, Tita Semez would win here tonight, it would be his first or his biggest first place check ever. $16,000, won $17,000 one time, finished second in the Firestone Tournament of Champions. Finished second to the great one, Earl Anthony. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Mike said this would be the key shot on the right-hand lane, and Daryl Curtis with a ticklish situation. The 367. He gave it room, but it just didn't come back. He's got to make this. Right now, he picked up the wrong ball cross lane he wants to hit the three pin on the right and slide it into the seven a little extra time too much mm. well they went for it uh, wasn't going to leave anything behind on that shot uh, sometimes you don't get the ball out far enough to even give it an opportunity but he cut it off a little bit short look like that time see in one frame so critical Semez was down one now he's up 18 Daryl Curtis takes no time. A little more speed on that shot and shakes him loose. Didn't look like that ball was going to get to the pocket. The boy made a right-hand turn. Yeah, left lane, he's getting the ball back on. Tita ready to put the vice grips on. Daryl Curtis here if he can continue to strike. Working on a double, he leads by 18. Left the four pin in the first. Nice flush strike in the third. On the right-hand lane. Boys increase that speed and loft. 
and he's just drilling the pipe. He's going to the frozen rope shot. <laughs> You don't get too many shots better than that one. And, uh, you know, all summer long, Mike and I sit up here and have a great time. And it uh, looks so easy to all of you out there. And there are many, many people technically involved in the summer tour on ESPN. Our producer, Tom Williamson, and director, Kent Samuel, two of the finest in the business, have uh, provided us with some amazing pictures, great reaction shots all summer long, guys. Thanks for everything. And uh, hopefully we'll meet in the same spot next year. Tita trying to lock this match up early. Up by 28, increase it to 38. Oh, he gave that a lot of room. Bouncing, dancing around a little bit. When you see one of the seniors run it out, it's serious business. Watch the loft. Watch the follow-through. See, the follow-through is the same. Now watch the six pin, second from the right. Goes to the sideboard and tries to get that 10, but it wasn't good enough lift. As he says, come on, ball. Boy, Tito working hard to the left that time. It just couldn't shake that 10-pin loose. No mistake, so he makes that 10-pin with no problem. Daryl Curtis, though, down by 27, as we see Bill Supper from the Ebonite Corporation, vice president of sales. And a pretty fair bowler in his own right, a PBA member. As a matter of fact, he won the Bowling Riders Tournament earlier this year and nearly shot 700 at those guys. Mm, same type of mistake on the right-hand lane. Once again, Daryl Curtis, I think, is lost at this point on lane 40. He's it's just, it's just not throwing the ball well, Dan. He's not getting out of the thumb clean. See, it's hardly turning over. Now it starts to turn over way too late. He's got to make this washout to have any chance to stay in this match. Come on, Daryl, give it a run. Up oh, once again, a little bit too much room. He shakes his head and knew it as soon as he let it go. And uh, Tita, with a little slap of both his hands, trying to encourage Daryl Curtis, who realizes, boy, there's nothing worse than getting into that title match and, and not having a chance to bowl well. Well, actually, you know, Daryl got a lot of breaks to get into this title match in the last game. Well, regardless of what happens to him tonight, he'll pick up his biggest ever PBA paycheck, $8,500. Once again, we see the baby split on the left side, the 2-7, and he opened with that. And he changed and he angle. Game. Suddenly, he moved into the second arrow there, figuring, well, he, he had to try something. He wasn't coming back from the outside angle. He figured he'd try moving in. You know, it's a little frustrating when you're out there in front of a national television audience doing your best. Well, he's got that spare down. <laughs> that yes. split conversion, he makes that look like it's nothing. Down by 45 sticks. And uh, experience tells me that once you get that far behind this gentleman right here, you're in a world of trouble. Especially when you have no clue how to get to the one-two pocket. Mm -hmm. Tita looking to get back into that X mark. Oh, this one's a little high, and boy, he gets a big break. Leaves the 3 6 10 and almost had the 7 with it. Interesting. He gave that one more room, and it hooked quicker. His speed wasn't as great that time. The speed was a little bit slower, and that ball grabbed instantly. It's what they call the overreaction. He wants to keep that ball right around that fifth board with a lot of speed. Well, Tita's wife, Virginia, obviously watching this one tonight, along with the rest of the children, Lori, Tommy, Michael, and Marissa. Straightened it out a little bit and picked up the three, six, ten. Well, he's been a classic performer for a good many years. Been one of the steadiest performers. He's made over $400,000 in his career, and he's done it by just being around 27 years a member, you know, of the PBA. Shake hands with him, and I'll tell you what, you understand why he's such a great player. Very strong forearms, hands, shoulder. He weighs six pounds more now than he did when he graduated from high school. He weighs 174 now. He weighed 168 when he graduated from high school. I wish I could say that. <laughs> I can't say that either, Dan. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, my goodness, Tita. Wait till we see the replay on this one. He was playing the twig out there that time. He really gave it room, and he came flying back. Don't you think this was just a touch to the right? I think he got it wider than he wanted to. Lots of loft. We got a whole dangerously lot of close to that blue board. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> he came back. He leave only the ten pin. Well, I'm telling you, trust is a must. But uh, my goodness, Mr. Sebastian, <laughs> that's flipping in the fast lane there. But I guess when you're throwing it good, give it some room. Daryl Curtis to have any chance in this match at all must strike here and in the ninth frame.
Brooklyn? Sure. Hey, you've got to take anything you can get at this stage. I tell you what, Daryl threw two strikes from the outside line on lane 39, and if I were he at this moment in time, I, that's where I would move. He's back out to the outside line on this left lane to give myself any kind of chance on this lane, but he's not. He's staying in. Possible 2.03 if he would take it off the sheet. Give himself any kind of a hope to win this tournament. Straighten it out a little bit back on the Brooklyn side. <laughs> well, I don't know, Mike. We've talked about adjustments all summer long, but I'm not so sure that's what you had in mind. I tell you what, that kept him in the match right now, though. Tita Semez needs two marks in the ninth and tenth frame, and he knows it, to lock this match up. If he opens in either one of the two frames, the ninth or tenth, Daryl Curtis has a chance to step up and win the tournament. And we've had our first re-rack of the championship round on the right-hand lane by Tita Semez. Was he buying time, or did he not like the rack? I think he might have been buying time. Me too. Just to gather his thoughts. He knows what the score is. He knows what he needs. Trying to step through the door and win his first singles title since 1977. He's on the move. Trip that four pin out of there on the right hand lane. And the situation is simple, then, as we uh, get a look at this shot again. He gave this one a little more room, but with more speed. See, he got out to about that fourth or third board. Now watch it hook. It's going high here, and he gets that two pin to trip the four. He needs any kind of mark in the 10th frame. If he would open, he would finish with 202, and Daryl Curtis could step up and win. And one gentleman we also want to thank wholeheartedly, Eddie Elias, the founder of the PBA. If he hadn't gotten all these guys together about 25, 26 years ago, we all wouldn't be here right now. Amen. You betcha. Tita rock steady. Gave it a lot of room. Gonna run it out, and there it is. Daddy lock up to step. Come on back, Tita. You can come back and pick up that championship trophy. He looked like he just ran the 60-yard day. Pretty quick, too. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have in time, Dad? About 6.1? Damn it, Christmas. Carl Lewis had nothing on him there. And Tita making his best shot of the day right over that fourth board. It's flush right now. He knows it. Is he running it out? Well, the high hard one at this point, Tita Semez is, turns around and uh, realizes that uh, he is the Ebonite PBA senior champion. And not only will he cash in for $16,000, but I have a feeling that more than the money, Mike, he's just pleased he's won another PBA title. Yeah, you've got it right on the, on the head. Yeah. So Tita with a beautiful spare 223. Excellent game bowled by the top seed as Anthony Tita Semez comes up with a big victory. He's already shaking hands in the crowd. We'll, of course, get a chance to talk to our newest champion when we return on ESPN. I love this country. It's so fun here. Yeah. Like this chicken thing. See, this is chicken cube. This is chicken strip. And this is chicken chicken, all white meat, best tasting part of chicken, tenderloin, most juiciest part, comes with fries and coleslaw, and where's only place you get chicken this good? At the fish place! I love this country! <laughs> Long John Silver sounds good to me. ESPN's greatest fall ever starts with a total sports Labor Day weekend. The college football season begins with Pitt at BYU. NFL football offers Minnesota at Denver Thursday. Friday, it's top-ranked boxing. Weekly Saturday college football gets underway. Sunday, Race Day America presents the first-ever back-to-back coverage of five auto races around the world. Monday, see the world's richest quarter horse race. The greatest fall ever starts with a total sports Labor Day weekend on ESPN. Win $100,000. The High Roller Bowling Tournament is coming east to the new Showboat Hotel, Casino, and Bowling Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Win only two head-to-head -head matches to recover your entry fee. Win ten matches for the $100,000 top prize. Join the elite of amateur bowlers this October 24th to the 27th and feel the excitement. For more information about this tournament and the lowest travel packages available, call 1-800-257-6179. When it comes to do-it-yourself projects, rely on True Value Hardware Store's professional quality master mechanic tools and their customer guarantee. The seven and a quarter inch circular saw is just $39.99. And the one-third horsepower jigsaw is only $36.50. Get three standard socket sets, 45 pieces for just $29.99.
and the Master Mechanic 5-gallon wet-dry vac for only $37.99, exclusively at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Well, geez, Tita Semez, it took you 10 years to win a senior's title and also a singles title on the PBA Tour. you got to be feeling pretty good about now. I feel great, Johnny. <laughs> I really feel great. I just, uh, I just, you know, I get up in the 10th frame and I said, all you need is a mark, and I just want to throw the ball good, which I did. You always throw the ball good, Tita Semez. Who are you trying to kid? Tom Malloy, step in here, the president of Ebonite. And boy, what a gorgeous trophy. On behalf of Ebonite International and Ebonite Firebolt line of bowling balls. Congratulations on a fantastic tournament and a great win. Here's a beautiful uh, trophy for you, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. You certainly deserved it. Thank you. I like it. I like to thank Ebonite. I like also like to thank Janet Bueller. She's a great person for us out here. I love her dearly, and I and. I just hope she gets well soon, and uh, that's it. I'll thank Fred Borden for the help he gave me this week, and if it wasn't for him, I don't think I'd be here. And uh, I want to say all my family back home, Virginia and the kids. Thank you. All right, now, Cheetah, don't go anywhere. I want you to thank Gary Rebelo, the tournament chairman, because he's got a nice big check for you. Uh, Cheetah, on behalf of Jana Bueller and Hall of Fame Lanes, we congratulate you for winning the tournament, and we have a check here for $16,000 for you. Gary, thank you very much. I know we're coming back next year, and uh, I'll be back to defend my title. <laughs> well spoken. Stay tuned because Mike Durbin will be joining us in just a moment or so. I'm here with the champion, Tita Semez. A light bulb is more than a great idea. It's one way True Value hardware stores help make your home more secure. Right in your yard with this instant on quartz floodlight, only $10.99. Then earn a $4 rebate with this TrueGuard Mercury Vapor Yard Light that covers up to 16,000 square feet. Add beauty and security with energy-saving GE Miser flood lamps and earn a $1 rebate. Then work overtime with the GE Bright Stick and earn a $2 mail-in rebate at participating True Value hardware stores. Sound for the day! Like many before, you came here asking for just one thing. Sadowski! Shibosky! A chance. Pronounce Shibosky. You're gonna make it here Cause you make America work And this time's for you Here's to you Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste Hey, Seth! That says Budweiser This Bud's for you Portions of this ESPN program are brought to you by ClearGuard, protecting from turtle wax. Shines better, shines longer. ClearGuard beautifies and protects rubber, vinyl, leather, and shines better, shines longer. Welcome back to Hall of Fame Lane to the Hall of Fame City, Canton, Ohio. We're here with our champion, Mike. I know you have a question for Tita. Well, I have an unusual question for Tita. He told me today earlier that if he won the tournament, he was going to quit smoking. And my question is, Tita, are you going to live up to that? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I'll tell you what, I'm going to try. I really am going to try. I, you know, my buddy Dick Weber says to me, hey, when are you going to quit those things? And, uh, and I also told him that if I won this tournament, and I also told you on the golf course today, that if I won this tournament, I think I'm going to quit. I'm going to give, give it a hell of a try, believe me. All right, Tita, we're proud of you. Nice going. Tita, just do me a favor. Quitting smoking is fine, but don't quit bowling, all right? No, I don't think, you know, I don't think I'm going to quit bowling. You know, I got a 22-year-old guy back home named Tommy, and I got uh, a two-year-old kid named, named uh, Michael, and I got a daughter named Marissa, and my, also my daughter named Lori, and... 15 years from now, I'm still going to be the Anchor Man. Okay, and we got to leave because the Anchor Man has won here in Canton, Ohio. Thanks for joining us. $115,000 Ebonite PBA Senior Championship has been brought to you by True Value Hardware. More than just a name, it's their way of doing business. 